All right, let's go over this great Duke Pearson tune entitled Janine. Now the key to this is we're going to be thinking from three different perspectives, all from an A flat though. So in other words, we're going to think A flat minor seven, which is a two chord in G flat. So two chord is going to be Dorian, right? That's going to be our 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 main body of of the tune is going to be a two chord. But notice when we do the two chord, it's specifically a two chord. Why? Because that F in the melody. All right, so that that sound is very Dorian-esque. Right, that's in the if I resolve to G flat, that would be a two chord. Now that's the whole play though, we don't go to G flat at all. We, we stay on A flat, but just as a minor chord. This is a good example of how this minor chord is acting as a two. Most of the time you have an, a minor chord acting as a six. So this is nice because you really have that F in there, which is very important. That F is in the A flat Dorian scale. Those are our Fs, right? So when you play any lines, that's, an, that's very Dorian sounding. Rather than having, you know, a flat six, which would be, but we don't want that. That's not in the key. We're really hearing because of the melody, right? So that's the whole theme of the song at first. Then it goes, it moves. Now what does it do? Well, it moves in a, a very common way. Now you have an A flat is gonna turn into a six chord, which is gonna make it sound Aeolian, as if we're in B major, because if, if A flat's now the Aeolian or the six, well that means it's the six of B major. So it's going to be six, seven, one. Now this idea is is like that because when you do this movement to the next part of the song, that idea of is very common. It's a two five. It sounds like a two five to the four to me. And the reason it sounds like that is because there's a lot of songs that do that. One of the most famous ones is. Uh, as I wrote here, it's the easiest way to get to a to a like a two five to the four because when you have this acting as a six, your ear hears that. Now that's acting as a six, which goes down to the the new two chord, which is going to to E major, which is the four chord in B. Right? We just said we are in B, and that's the four chord. Now songs do this all the time because it's very it sounds good. When you're on the relative minor of the key you're in, in this case it turns into B, right? So we're in six chord. You can easily go down a whole step. It's a nice planing sound, right? Which then makes it sound like you're going to a two five to the four, which E major is acting as a four. It's two five one, but it's really two five to the four. Right? So Now, that really has that specific sound to it, just like uh, different tunes do. You know, a famous one that does that is Sunny, right? The Bobby Hepton. Sunny. Thank you for my life. Da, 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 da. I don't know the words, but that's the idea. Is even do in that song they do what I call four of four now this is getting a little nerdy but this sound right here this chord which I just played is in the tune sunny also now it's, it's basically doing two five to the four and that's the four of the four you 
know, otherwise known as flat seven dominant. To me, this sounds like the same movement four, fourth wise, like two, five to the four chord. That movement from B major to the four, and then and then again, is the sounds like it just continues. It continues that sound of four. So I, that's why I hear it as a four four. But it, people call that secondary dominant flat seven, right? Flat seven dominant. So this idea of Now we're going to do that in this tune because remember when we play that when we play that 2 5 down this is now acting as a 6. So A flat went from acting as a 2 chord to we're in to a 6 chord, same chord, but now we're going to use, we're going to overlay a different sense of harmony over it, right? AKA parallel key movement. That's the whole idea. That's what you do in the blues. Just a little bit more. This is a little bit more layered, right? Right, that's kind of the idea. So, and this song does that. So, when you start doing that, you're you're now playing as if you're in A flat Aeolian, like we said, six chord. Well, what's in A flat Aeolian? Well, you get that E. That's why we go two five to the E, two five to the four, right? Four a four, which is right next to the two, to major one, kind of Cole Porter styley, where you do a minor two five to major one, right? And the reason I hear it as a minor two five, some people will argue, oh that's just B flat minor eleven. Yeah, you're right, it is. But that line right there. very that's very like minor two five e to me right if you're in if you're in uh, a flat minor you know six chord seven three six but instead of doing that Cole Porter style it goes a flat major and that's our third perspective right so this song is very unique in that sense because you have to really think from three different perspectives to really improvise over this well so here's the chords that we kind of have you know, when I was playing that, that last 2-5. Um, you know, and you can read everything I'm saying is basically written on here. So we're going to think, you know, 2-5 as a minor 2-5. My ear hears this as 7-3-6 in the key of B, which is going to A flat minor, right? Relative minor, 6 chord. And then since that 2-5 to the 6, your ear still hears this as Aeolian. And then when you get, you know, when you play that, that second chord, A flat, or the A13, you know, that's kind of that 4-4 four, four movement that I like to, that's what I call it, you know, flat 7 dominant, whatever you want to call it. So, then you go to the major, you resolve to major, Cole Porter style, right? So there's our major scale. Right, so I'm thinking, right, I'm thinking straight major, A flat major. I just arpeggiated A flat major 9. Right, so that's what's kind of, that's what's really cool about this. Now, if you want to um, take it to the next level, let, let's go down to the to the bridge. You know, the bridge kind of takes you to the four chord, if, as if you're in A flat major. Right, it goes two five to the four D flat major, and then uh, what is it? Uh, then to F major. So I look at that F though. The F's interesting. Why F? Well, to me, that F sound is still kind of you, kind of hinting back to the original motif, right? That F. So it kind of goes to via the one, two, five to the four, right? I think they chose F major. Why would you choose F major when you could two five anywhere? Well, it's you know that sound of F. I think they did that because it's kind of, kind of hinting back, uh, melodically, in a harmonic way. Now, you know, in a chord way, we're gonna go to F major. And to be honest, this two five to the four, and then it kind of comes out of nowhere two five to F major, which is kind of you know unique. But I, to me, that my ear hears that is kind of reminiscent of that last of the original motif. 
but via a, a chordal movement and then a function change to F minor, right? Then back, back to the A, right? So you can read through all this. This is just basically me explaining that idea. You know, results A flat major really does sound like a one major chord. So it's cool how your ear hears this from three different perspectives. This is what I call parallel key movement. You know, this is actually like three different parallel keys, right? Usually it's just usually it's just two. Like when I the first lecture we talked about just the blues. That's just really just two different keys, right? On top of each other. You know, one major and six, right? Of the same parallel, same key. So this idea kind of takes it a little further. And this is how I hear it. That's how I play over it. Once I started really hearing it like this, it was much easier for me to play over. So you can read through this, kind of really take it in and try and understand this. I'm sure it's not that easy just to hear this right away and get it. So that's why I wrote this out. Um, you know, that's how I hear it. That movement of, um, you know, six chord down a whole step is very common. And this is coming from the first idea, which we kind of heard as a two chord, right? So, quick review. Let's. How do you play Janine? Well, you're thinking about it from three different keys, right? First, you're going to think about it as a two chord, Dorian. Why? Because of that F in the melody. Okay, and then what? Well, that two five movement to the four, six, two five to the four. Four of four. One major. So we thought, right there we thought, two chords, Dorian, A flat. Now we're going to treat this as a six chord to harmonically get to a different key. B, now we're in B major, if that's the six. That's our one. So six to the two, five to the four of that same key. Four of four, and then minor 2-5 to major 1, right? So that's our third perspective. That's how I'm hearing it. You know, the bridge goes, still really stays in A-flat. 2-5 to the 4 of A-flat, which is D-flat, and then out of nowhere, ba ba doo ba to F major. So this, I guess this is kind of the fourth perspective, really. But it's not really, you know, you're not really thinking from A-flat, so that's why I didn't really include it in in there but you know this is movement goes to F F is not just a random note it's in that melody it's in that original motif but via a harmonic right minor function change and then you're back six chord uh, see, I can't talk and play at the same time. But when you immediately when you start to do that, that movement, it's not going anywhere. It's a very common movement. It's very strong, right? So like I explained, you know, it's different songs. You can have it in uh, Bobby Hepp's uh, Sunny, referenced in Music So Child's Just Friends, same song. And Bobby Caldwell's What You Won't Do For Love, to name a few. They all do that same movement, right? Da 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 da. Uh. Well, what is he doing? What? There might be some other movements, but that's the, kind of the overall idea. It's the same. It's the same movement. So this idea is when you start labeling these things, you really start to be able to hear them and you hear them in other songs because you're thinking functionally, right? You're thinking in numbers, two, five to the four. Oh, okay. If I start on if I start on the two, okay, I'm thinking two, Dorian, because that F, right? There's my scale. That really sounds right. If I play E's in there, it's not going to sound right until I get to this two, five movement, which is very, has an E in it. Well, it's because we started transitioning. Why, why would you think E's all of a sudden? Well, it's because we're, think, we're treating it as a six chord now, right? It even does four four, my favorite. 
So that's kind of the idea behind this is how I hear it. Hopefully this helps. And, um, you know, keep thinking about parallel key movements and go through all the lectures. Start with number one, go to two, and then three. This is the third one for obvious reasons where it's very layered, right? There's about three layers going on for the parallel idea, right? You're thinking A flat minor is two. A flat minor is six. A flat major is one, right? So that's the idea of this. Now, um, maybe we can play through this. It's life. 